More than 3,000 kilometers and seven races over some of the roughest terrain the South African continent can throw at them. These are the country's best off-road racing drivers, driving some of the best off-road machinery you will find anywhere on the planet. It's fast, it's rough, it's filled with drama and emotions, and it is downright spectacular. It's called the South African Ready Ray Championship, and we go behind the dust. Hello, I'm Janil de Villiers. Um, I've been racing for just over 30 years. Started off in touring cars back in the 90s, won four South African touring car titles, and then I moved to off-road racing. I won my first championship in off-road racing in 2001, then moved on to race overseas in off-road championships. I won the Dakar Rally in 2009. I'm the current South African Rally Raid champion, so uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can do the same this year. My name is Johan de Bruyne. I'm a businessman from Pretoria. I recently started racing off-road, or what they call the South African Rally Raid Championships. Last year was just coming into the racing scene, learning a few new things, trying new cars. So this year we decided to move on to a brand new Redline Revo T1 Class FIA. This is our brand new car behind us, and I'm really looking forward to the season. I'm Glenn Hall from the Toyota Gazoo Racing Team, South Africa. I've been involved in motorsport all my working life, so that rates back to 1976. I haven't done the maths, but it feels like uh, well above 40 years. Uh, some could say I've never had a proper job, so uh, yeah, it's my passion is, uh, is the business and that makes it a lot easier. We try and create these pockets of excellence, so really much from start to finish a turnkey solution. Hi, I'm Terence Marsh, uh, CEO of Redline International. Um, we manufacturers and service providers for T1 Dakar race cars. Redline International, totally independent. We can choose to design the cars, whatever we want, when we want, whether it's aerodynamics to the look and the feel. We really have a blank canvas. We don't have anybody from a major manufacturer or one of the leading brands dictating the look of a race car or the components in the race car or which engines to use. So 100% independent. My responsibility is to look after all the technical aspects of the Tour de Gazoo racing team. That's everything to do with the regulations, a car is built to it, in our case that's the Hilux. And the races are predominantly on rough roads, gravel roads, sandy roads, big dunes. And in South Africa we have nearly all of those aspects actually apart from the big dunes in our championship. Uh, when we go to Botswana, we have good sandy roads, lots of uneven surfaces, so it's a great place for us to test. From, a, from an independent point of view, the, the positives being that we, we're free to do what we want, when we want. Uh, the negatives is you obviously don't have that big manufacturing budget behind you. Every rand, you've got to make it yourself. So a very customer-centric business. Customers are between 35 and 65 years old, multi-millionaires somewhere around the world that have a sense of adventure or Dakar on their bucket list. We really facilitate that process. From a budget perspective, I, I'd be surprised if we had 10% of what, what the major manufacturers are having. You know, as I said, so we, we're on the same playground, which is all good and well, but uh, it's kind of the David and Goliath story. You know? The reality is they've got a significant amount of money. We would focus a lot more on reliability than performance because of the ability of our customer base to run these cars and maintain them around the world. So the exit point for us is probably at about 90%. To try and extract the last 10% of that car requires a lot of time, resources and money. And that's not something that we have. And then we're good to go. We're good to race. Yeah, yeah. From Redline International's point of view, we do run a factory car and all those upgrades and learnings get passed on to our customer cars effectively. But most of the cars that we're running, both in the South African and Dakar International, are customer cars. And of course, like anything else, whether a man one likes to admit it or not, there are always egos. And, and obviously that's the biggest thing, how to manage those egos. Johan de Brain is the latest in our stable. Very interesting character. He's fast, he comes with a good background. When we do a lot of the training, the track guys are very good for us to train because they're clean and neat. 
biking guys, off-road biking, that is also very good because they can read the terrain and they also know what it's like to fall off and how they can hurt themselves. So they bring those disciplines and neatness in. And Johan's one of those guys, he's been here for one year and in one year he's, he's won his first national and he's finished the third overall in the championship where I don't think anybody predicted that or saw that one coming. It's been a difficult learning curve. We've been thrown quite a few curveballs from the start. Probably bad luck because we just didn't know what to do. But I'm very lucky in the sense that I've got an extremely good and experienced co-driver by the name of Karat Skitta. He's been around the block. Okay, so a motto? For the day? For the year. Finish? Fast. He taught me quite a lot throughout the last year. We've got an old class T1, which used to be the premium class, with normal 16-inch wheels on it, with the old 280 mil travel, which is still an unbelievable car, and I believe that this is still the class to be in. It'll still be the most competitive class with the most privateers. There are entries from Ford, Toyota, Redline vehicles with Ford engines, Nissan engines. Cars are very similar because of balance of performance. The experienced guys say it takes about six years to learn to the ropes to get competitive. Some of these guys have been racing for the last 20 years. Very experienced, very good, very, very competitive. All in all, I think this is the class to be in. Our car that we race in Dakar is very similar to the car that we race in the South African Rally Raid Championship. Identical in effect, just small setup changes make the difference. So again, this is a really good place for us to develop the car. We've got Janil as our uh, driver who's full of experience. He's 20 Dakars under his belt. So Janil understands what Rally Raid is all about. And remembering where Janil came from, he was our four times touring car champion. And it's very unusual for a, a driver to be so successful on the track and so successful on gravel. Last year was quite an exciting year. Managed to win the championship with a T1 Plus. Quite a nice battle with my young teammate Henk Latahan. It's a good challenge. And yeah, it's good practice for us for our preparation always for the Dakar Rally. So yeah, very happy to have won the title at my ripe age. My kilometers are also getting higher, but um, you know, it's still great to win a championship. Well, Inc. is young and fast. He's still below 30 years of age, which is still quite young in, in off-road racing. I think he's got a lot of talent. He's got, you know, a bright future ahead of him. He's done three Dakars now. Normally, it takes about five Dakars for you to really learn the ropes there and know what it's about. In off-road racing, you don't always have to be the fastest everywhere. It's important to know where to go fast and where to go a little bit slower. It's very important that you, um, obviously, finish the race. To finish first, first you have to finish. It's an old cliche, but it's very true in off-road racing. Um, and uh, yeah, you've got to keep the wheels on the car. 